main question we get about the chaos is, and the main question seems to be is like, what is really the big difference between the, the chaos and a pro arm K? And like, do they ride totally different? Uh, is it harder to get places on one, one versus the other? The short answer to that is that pro arm K is designed to lift the chassis and get up on top of snow. That's its number one design intent is to, is to create lift so that the chassis doesn't go through the snow like auger and like that. You know, to really understand where Polaris is, uh, to where the Polaris design mindset is, you've got to go back to really the IQ chassis. Late 2000s, the Dragon Sled's the IQ chassis. You've got uh, Marty Sampson and Lyle Dahlgren and now Jesse Laugan. So Marty and Lyle um, are kind of the RMK, and there's a lot of other guys. There's suspension guys, engine guys, platform guys, chassis guys. But Lyle and Marty really have done a lot of the, the design from the IQ chassis forward. So that would be like the Pro RMK that came out in 2011 and then the Axis RMK that came out in 2016. So those two chassis iterations and, and everything that Polaris is designed to do kind of come from that team. When they, when they went from the IQ chassis and left that and went to the Pro Ride chassis for 2011, they looked at everything about snowmobiles and man they used to they used to tell us we would watch videos photos look at photos in magazines look at every little thing and look at every detail and just see how is that snowmobile and that chassis and that track and the ski and the suspension how is all of those components interacting with the snow everywhere they go they're just completely focused on how how the snowmobile interacts in the snow and their objective with that was how do we make a chassis and a snowmobile, a mountain sled, that the first thing it does is try to get up on top of snow and drive forward. Nobody wants a mountain sled that just trenches everywhere, uh, and nobody wants a mountain sled that is hard to get up on its edge. So they wanted something that created lift and created forward propulsion. You fast forward through the Pro Ride chassis to the Axis chassis in 2016, which was so much different, so much better than the Pro Ride chassis, just amazing step forward. And then two years ago, when they changed the front end and went to a narrow front end when the 850 came out, that creates this sled that is just ultra lightweight and it gets up on top of the snow and drives through the snow better than anything out there. Back to where we where we started, uh, Chaos versus Pro RMK. Uh, the Pro RMK, which has been out since 2016 and then had a few refinements since then, is designed to just drive through the snow. Stay on top of the snow, stay on top of deep powder, and just go places. So the big difference with the Chaos is the Chaos does give up a little bit of that because uh, it, it creates a little more of a, a center pivot point on the weight transfer. Front rail shock on the skid frame is just a little bit longer and the rail profile uh, is designed to give this sled a little bit more weight transfer. So when, when you get on the throttle and you pull back on it, it's gonna lift the skis out of the snow more than a Pro RMK wheel. And that just creates a little more uh, lively and playful feel. Other than that, the sleds are the same, the front ends are the same, minus the shocks. You know, you've got the walker velocity shocks on the Chaos, and you've got pretty much any shock you pick uh, in snow check, or you've just got the base model walker monotube shock on the Pro RMK. We rode the 2020 Chaos uh, as a prototype, you know, 14, 15 months ago, and then rode the production sled all last season, and now we've been riding the 2021 Chaos. This is definitely our favorite Polaris to date. Last year, we had a we had a three-inch chaos with the chain drive, and we had a 2.6-inch chaos with the belt drive. And typically, anytime we have to order a Polaris or we get a, we get a chance to choose, uh, we always go for the belt drive, even though it's the lower lug track. With the snow that we get, the lower lug track is great. There's a few days where the three-inch would do better, but to us, it's never been worth the trade-off of having a chain drive. For one, the chain case, the gearing ratio was quite a bit higher than the quick drive with the belt drive. So the response, the throttle response is different. The way that sled comes out of the hole is different. Uh, it's, it's just not the same feel. So we've always gravitated towards the, the, the quick drive or the belt drive system. So in 21, Polaris, they replaced the, the chain drive with quick drive two, which is a similar belt drive system, quick drive system. In fact, it's the same top, uh, top belt gear. And then the, the bottom belt drive gear is, is just a bigger diameter, a lot more teeth and the chain belt is longer. And the cool thing about it really is, is you, get, you get a lighter weight because you also get a new drive shaft. Um, so the, the drive shaft's lighter, the quick drive system is lighter, but really you get 
you get a lower gear ratio. So you get quite a bit lower gear ratio than what the chain drive was giving you. And it's not quite as low as the quick drive, the, the quick drive one that's on the 2.6 inch track models, but it's significantly lower than the chain drive. That really makes the 21 Chaos with either the three inch track or the 2.75 inch track, which is also new, makes that sled handle and respond quite a bit better and quite a bit more responsive. The other new thing for 2021 is the Series 8 track, and you guys have probably heard a ton about this. So, so if, if you go to the, the 2.6 inch track, which is their Series 6 track, which has been out since 2016, came out on the, the original Axis RMK. That's, it's a lightweight track, so 2.86 inches between your lug rows and 2.6 inches on the lug height. It's a very good all-around track. It, uh, it does everything well. It's probably not spectacular at any one thing, but it, across the board, it does, does everything well. So the new Series 8 track is a 3.5 inch pitch. So you're, you're spreading out that distance between your lugs and you're taking a bigger bite of snow. And it's a 2.75 inch lug height. So a little bit taller than the, than the old 2.6 track, not quite a three inch. And that, that quarter inch in lug height makes a big difference. And we'll get to that in a minute. But on the track pitch, what that does is that allows that track to be quite a bit lighter because you're, lo you're eliminating a couple rows of lugs and that's where the bulk of your weight comes from. And the, the belt on the track is thinner. It's, a, it's, a, it's just a lighter track all around. So you get a lighter track. If you, if you were to order a 21 or get a 21 with quick drive two and the 2.75 inch track, you're gonna get the lightest 850 setup you can get. It's got, in our opinion, the best track to order for a 21. Now, obviously we're, the video is about this 21 163 three inch, not a 2.75. We did spend a lot of time on the 2.75 track. This three inch track is the one that we've had for the last few weeks. Generally, like we said, we're not big fans of three inch tracks across the board. Uh, we would prefer two and a half to some little, little, little lower, and that's because your your lug is a little bit firmer and it tends to penetrate firm snow. You know, we don't we, we get awesome deep snow days and we get a lot of deep powder days, but we don't get deep powder days all year long. If we if we take that full season into consideration, we're better off with a little bit shorter lug, just because if you look at a a two and a half or the 2.75 versus a three inch, the, the very tip of that three inch lug on most tracks tends to fold or curl over just a little bit under load on any kind of a firm snow. You lose drive there, um, you lose traction, you, you lose a little bit of braking power. The 2.75 versus the three inch track, the 2.75 just has a little bit firmer bite unless you're in really deep snow. Then the three inch track is just a bigger shovel and it it will go through deep snow a little bit better than the 275. Everything else, I think the 275 is a little bit better track all around, and it's lighter. That said, this three inch track on the Chaos for 21, it's awesome. I mean, I've, I've never really liked the three inch track on Polaris's um, because of the chain drive for the weight penalty and the gear ratio, but the three inch track on this 21 Chaos, since it has quick drive too, well, there goes the weight and now you fix the gearing. So we get a lower gear ratio. This sled takes off like a rocket. It feels, it's got the same responsiveness as the 2.6 Series 6 track because the gear ratio is so much lower. You got a little bit more bite. You got a little more space between your lugs. So it's, it's taking a, a better chunk of snow. It's just more responsive. It just feels better. It, it comes out of the hole better. It's, it's quicker off the throttle. It's quicker around trees. When you're on an edge and you're kind of carving along a, a hillside, and you look up and you pick a line, I mean, this thing is just instantly there because of the gearing ratio. That gearing makes a huge difference. And for that reason, I would say if you've got a, a 2020 Polaris Chaos um, and you just want the best sled out there, I would do everything I could to get rid of that 20 this fall and pick up a 21 because the quick drive two makes an, an enormous difference. If, if, you're a, if you're a Polaris rider and you've, you've ridden a Pro Arm K since 2016 when the Axis came out, and you just you're in love with how how solid that sled just tracks on a side hill and just drives across the snow and you don't want to mess with that then don't get a chaos stick with the pro rmk um, because a chaos is is going to be less likely to just track straight on a side hill like that it's going to want to lift up over any kind of a bump in the terrain it's going to transfer weight a little bit more you're going to have to be a little more aggressive on the chaos to get it to do the same things that the pro rmk does 
if you want to if you want the utmost in predictability and you want a straight tracking like like awesome side healing machine stick to the pro rmk if you have a pro rmk and you're you're constantly thinking like eh, yeah when i get on the throttle i mean I, I would like this thing to come up i would like this thing to be a little more playful a little less effort into me pulling back on the bars to get the front end to come up and move to the side if i wanted to then you're a chaos guy Okay, get a chaos. Sell your Pro RMK and get a chaos. Um, if you're coming off a cat or a skidoo, I would say if you're going to a Polaris, get the chaos. It's going to be a little more of a familiar feel to you. It's going to behave a little more like a cat and a little more like a skidoo, where the front end is a little bit lighter under under power when you're on the gas. I and mean, the chaos is just a blast. Like it is such a fun sled ride. We've had some questions about the Walker Velocity shocks. They are they are really good high end shock. In fact, going through Polaris's lineup and timber sled lineup the walker velocity is is the top of the line shock that polaris offers brings are lightweight and you have you have high speed compression clickers and you have low speed compression clickers which really make a big difference that's that's probably the thing that sets the walker velocities apart from the other shocks in polaris's lineup most of your tuning is going to be done on the low speed clicker low and, and we're not talking like how fast the snowmobile is going or ground speed High speed versus low speed on, on clickers is all about uh, shock shaft movement. Most of the riding, like if you're, if you're just cruising down a trail and you're just kind of going over some rollers, if you're in the bottom of a canyon uh, and you're just kind of bop, popping off logs and jumping off drifts and stuff, that's all low speed shock shaft movement. The high speed shaft movement is going to be when you're just hammering out those ice hard moguls. Anything that just really suddenly makes that shock compress, that's a high speed situation. So being able to split those and tune for low speed and high speed gives you twice as much tuning capability over the shock. So that's why those velocities are really cool shocks. Everybody's got a little bit different riding style and a little bit different needs and preference out of what they need out of those shocks. So what we recommend, and these velocity shocks are no different, is, is get the sled stock, ride it so that you establish a baseline and you know what the shock is doing and what it feels like. Then take the shocks off and send them to somebody like Carl Cycle in Boise or Himalaya and Alpine. And there's quite a few places that can dial these shocks in. And you're going to want to spring it first for your weight because that's, that's ride height. Like you want, you want the shock to be able to just carry you as a rider. Then you can get into the valving and get a little bit different valving if you want a more plush ride, if you want a more progressive ride. That's, that's where you get into the shock specialty stuff. Same goes with clutching. You know, if you want, you want a little firmer back shift, you want a little quicker engagement, go do it. Yeah, that's great. Um, as far as the stock package goes, the, the sled is really well-rounded. The, the, the only complaint we would have on the, the stock shocks as they come on this sled is in the track, that the, the rear end of the chaos with the, with the velocities, um, if you're in a, like a long line of moguls on either the bottom of a canyon or on a rough trail, It'll, it'll absorb like the first three or four more moguls and then it'll just kind of compress out of the stroke and it'll kick. So you'll, you'll be able to go through three or four bumps and then you'll get a kick. And then you'll have to kind of realign and, and pull yourself together and you'll be able to pull in three or four or five more big hard hits and then that back end's going to kick a little bit. So I think that could be cleaned up a little bit with some, uh, uh, a little bit of more clicker adjustment if you're just going to leave it stock, but certainly with some uh, aftermarket revalve and springs. The Polaris's are pretty dialed on the clutching as far as stock goes, at least for our conditions. You could make it back shift a little firmer if you want a little bit harder hit, but we, we are pretty impressed with how the clutching works on this sled. Pretty certain that for 22, they're going to do away with the Series 6 2.6 inch track. Like that's just going to be gone and you're, you're just going to have two tracks like everybody else. I love this sled. Like this thing is, is so dang fun. And Arctic Cat, Skidoo, Polaris. All of these sleds are awesome. Like if you guys honestly think that one of these sleds is significantly better than the other two, it's just not true. It's just not, it's not even possible. I mean, it's 2021, these sleds are amazing. It's less about what the sled does and more about what the rider is capable of adapting to. The three sleds do handle and drive and have power response that, that are different between the three. And the three sleds have kind of unique features that are different between the three. Uh, dry weights are different, steering systems are different, you know, you got the vertical steering post on the Polaris and you've got a lay, more of a lay down steering post on a Skidoo. That right there completely changes how the sleds handle in the mountains and if you are a Skidoo person and can't adapt, won't let yourself adapt to a vertical post, you're just never going to be comfortable on a Polaris. 
same thing goes the other way. If you're just a Polaris diehard and you hop on your buddy's skidoo for five minutes, you're never going to adapt to anything in five minutes. So you're always going to say, oh, that, I can't ride that thing. I don't know how anybody rides that thing. Our job is to give, give it more than five minutes when we're testing stuff. We're able to hop from Cat to Skidoo to Polaris and in between all three of those because we spend so much time on them in the, se in the season and in all these different conditions. So it's easy for us to jump back and forth between the two because we know what we need to change the second we get on. You know, if, if you get off of a Polaris and hop on a Cat, we know exactly what we've got to do different as riders. But if you're not willing to adapt to the snowmobile and you just want to stick with what's familiar, well then just keep buying what's familiar because you're, you're not going to enjoy something if you don't want to change. The vertical steering post on the, on the Polaris, on the Chaos and on the Pro-Arm K, that really allows you to kind of hold a, a really firm edge on the heel side and, and get forward on the sled and be able to drive, at, drive that sled as you're standing up kind of leaning over the bars. Um, the lay down system on the Skidoo tends to push a rider back. So when, when, a, when a guy on a Skidoo thinks he's over the front end, he's not. He's probably got like eight inches farther forward he could put his feet. Where a Polaris guy, if you think you're on the front of the sled, your feet are up against the very front of the sled. You're as far forward as you can get because you can get right up next to the bars on your hips. When we take the Polaris's out to test, it, it, you're just instantly in love with the feeling in, in just a few minutes. I mean, they're just so much, uh, they've got such like a dirt bike feel. Um, you're kind of up over the chassis a little more. You're, you're centered on the chassis. You've got the bars in a position where your, your elbows are bent and kind of up and you're looking over the front of the sled and you can really kind of drive that thing like a bike. And it, it's just got a good, very familiar feel to it. It's, it's light, so it, the chassis responds really good to just really subtle rider inputs. You can do so much to the chassis on a Polaris just through foot movement to get that sled to do different things. In some conditions, Polaris definitely has a more planted feel and then from there you're, you're, you're lifting or tipping until you get on edge and then it's planted on edge. So between flat and edge is a little bit more resistance in some snow conditions, but when you're on edge, that Polaris just locks in. They do just a good job of feeling lightweight everywhere you go and that translates into a really fun and enjoyable ride. So when you go from a Pro RMK that you're familiar with and you go to a Chaos, that just kind of gets amplified to where it's an even more fun feeling, a more responsive feeling, and that's just why we love the Chaos. I would love the Pro RMK. I've got no hesitation buying that sled, but if I can pick, I am taking the Chaos every day of the week. Mm -hmm.